Okay, so this is your homework. <clears throat> um, we're doing probability of compound events. So let me just make this bigger. Okay, so blah, blah, let's start with the first one. So you want to find the probability of compound events, and the first question so says find the probability of a cube landing on three and then on five. So the probability of landing of three is one six, and then the probability of landing on five is also one six, and our total is one over thirty six. Probability, uh, probability landing of two is one out of six, and then a two again is one out of six, and that is that is one out of thirty six. The probability of landing of four is one out of six, and then an odd number, there are three odd numbers, one, three, and five, so that's three out of six. I can simplify this to one half, and I can multiply across, and then the probability is one out of 12. So these are independent events, meaning what happens in the first event really doesn't affect what's happening, what happens on the second event, right? Because um, it doesn't change anything. Um, the probability of a second event. Okay, just like if I throw a coin and I want to land on heads first and then on heads second, the probability of landing on heads on the first one is half, and the probability of landing on heads on the second time is also half. This does not have any effect. Uh, the first uh, first outcome does not have any effect on the second outcome. Okay, so that makes it independent. So it was almost like the first one has nothing to do with the second one. It really doesn't change anything that's going to happen after. Okay. So a box contains 15 billion boards, number 1 through 5. Anna draws a board, uh, draws a ball, records a number, and then she puts it back in the box. Okay. Then Vicky draws a second ball. Find each probability. So what's the probability of get of picking the 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 billiard board number nine? Well, there's only one number nine, right? So it'd be one out of nine. Sorry, not one out of nine. One out of fifteen, because there's fifteen total. So probability of picking a nine, the first one, is one out of fifteen. And then picking a three would be also one out of fifteen. So the chances are one over two hundred and twenty-five. Picking a 8 would be 1 out of 15, and then picking an odd number would be how many odd numbers? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. There's 15 balls, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 odd numbers, so 8 out of 15. We can multiply this, and our odds are now 8 out of 200, 225. Uh, probably pick an even number, so there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 balls that are even numbers, so it'd be 7 out of 15. And then picking the probability of an odd number, uh, another odd billiard board that's odd, would be 8 out of 15. 56 out of, uh, what do you call, 225. Okay, and notice that our denominators is 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Because when she takes one billiard board out, she takes one out, right, looks at the number, she puts it right back in. So our total number does not change. Okay, uh, which you're going to see a little difference on the uh, next problem. Each letter of Littrell is written on the card, L-I-T-T-R-E-L-L. The cards are replaced in the, are placed in the basket. Find each probability. Probability if Elsa selects a card, leaves it out, and then selects another card. So, once you select a card, so let's say you selected the letter E, you take this out, put the E back, and then when you go back for your second one, that E is no longer there. Okay, because it's outside. So this one is without replacement. So we're not replacing the card that we took out. Okay, so that's the difference. Uh, between independent or, in, or uh, what do you call dependent. So this one is a dependent event, right? Dependent because what happens in the first uh, on the first time on the on the on the first time she selects a card changes, right? Uh, changes the amount on the second try. So um, let's just do, do do one example here. 
and maybe we, I can explain it better. What's the probability of selecting a T? Well, the probability of selecting a T is one, there's two T's, right? The probability of selecting a T is two out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two out of eight. So she goes in the bag here, the basket, she takes out a letter T, leaves it over here, then goes back to the basket. Well, before she goes back to the basket, let me eliminate that T because it's no longer there. Um, and then she wants to select an E, right? And the probability of selecting the letter E is 1. And you'll notice that we don't have 8 cards anymore. Instead, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that's why this is a dependent event because the outcome of the first one changes uh, the outcome of the second one, 2 out of 56, because the denominator here changes. Okay, we don't we no longer have eight cards, but now we have seven cards. Okay, so that makes this a dependent event. Um, so number nine, what's the ball probability selecting a key a T again? Let me just erase this. Um, so we're gonna go into the bag, or she's going to go into the bag. So select a lot of T. So again, she's gonna take this T, put it over here. So that T is no longer in the bag. So the probability of selecting the T the first time, well, actually the first time there were two T's, right? Two over eight. Now she's going back in the bag and try to select another T. Well, when she goes back into the bag, first of all, there's only one T left. So the probability now is a one, because there's only one T. And how many letters do we have left? Seven. So probability of that happening, of you selecting a T and then going back to the bag and selecting another T is 2 out of 56 or 1 out of 28. For question 10, again same thing, we're gonna go, we, we want to go to the bag and select the letter E and the letter E, there's only one E so it'd be 1 out of 8. So we'll, let's take that E, take it out of the bag, put it over here cross that out because the E is no longer in the bag and then I want to get the letter I. Well on the second try if I'm going for the letter I there's one I so it's times one I and out of seven so the probability of that happening would be one out of 56. Okay. Um, did I do something? I have a feeling I had a prior problem. I wrote two. No I was right. Okay, so that's the difference between dependent and independent. So dependent are these questions right here, 7, 8, 9, 10. And independent are the first six questions here, where the first one has no effect on the second one. Um, so let's look at number 11. Lita has a coin with heads on one side and tails on the other side. She's going to flip the coin in the air three times. What's the probability of the coin landing on the on landing on tails? So she wants tails and then heads, twice heads, and heads. So that's what she wants, the probability of this. And to and heads and heads. Right? So um the probability of landing on tails in the first coin is a half. Probability of landing on heads on the second coin is also a half. And the probability of landing on heads on the third coin is also a half. So the total would be she would have a one eighth of a chance to uh, have this accomplished, right? And notice just notice that this plays no effect on that, and this plays no effect on that. Nothing changes here. It's not like we can leave one side of the coin on the table and just and flip the side, flip the coin, right? So uh, <clears throat> this is an independent event independent event because the outcome of the first event has no relevance have plays no effect on the outcome of the second event okay we're not leaving anything outside everything goes back to where it was before you start the second or third trial um, Bill's golf bag contains nine white golf bags uh, balls six yellow golf balls and one orange golf ball and one pink golf ball He's out looking, he's going to take one golf ball out to try to out of his bag to tee off with a different golf bag to putt with. So he's going to um, 
use one ball for one type of swing and use another colored ball for another type of swing. So what's the probability of te teeing off with a white ball and, de and then and putting and putting with an orange ball? Um, is he going to take it off and put it back? He's going to take one ball out of his back, tee off, and then with and a different ball. So I don't think he's putting the balls back, it doesn't say. So let's assume, so in this case, if you take one out, um, you don't put it back in. Okay, so that also that obviously changes the number of balls that are in the bag. So let's add the, the balls first. So we got nine white, six yellow, one orange, one pink. So if we add this up, we got 17, 10, 17 golf balls. So the probability of him getting a white ball first, well, there are 17, and the probability of getting a white ball first on his first try is 9 out of 17. So he takes the white one out, puts it here on the side, so he takes this white ball here, puts it on here, so I no longer have 9 golf balls on, in my bag, but he, he has 8 golf balls, right? And then he's going to go back to the bag on the second try, and he wants to get an orange ball. Well, how many orange balls are there? There's one orange ball. But you notice that the total now changes. 8 plus 6 is 14, plus 1 is 15, plus another 16. So there are now 16 balls in his golf bag. And if you multiply 17 times 16, you get 272. So he has a 9 out of 272 chance of selecting a white golf ball first, followed by a orange uh, golf ball. So this is definitely a dependent event. Why is it dependent? Because this first outcome here changed the second outcome. Now, where is the change? Well, the, there is one less golf ball. Okay. Uh, in total. 13. A drawer contains 10 blue, 10 red pens. Without looking, Mrs. Stanton is going to take one red pen from the drawer, use it, and then put it back in the drawer. Then he's going to take another pen from the drawer to use. What is the probability of taking a red pen followed by a blue pen? So red and then blue. So let's add the pens. There's 20 pens. So I know my total here is going to be 20. So on the first, there's two things he's going to do. He's, Miss Tanton's going to try to take a, uh, uh, or is it Miss or Miss? No matter. Uh, she's going to try to take a, uh, it's probably taking a red first. So how many red first? Red pens? There are 10 red pens out of 20. Right? So she takes the red pen. So let me write 10 blue, 10 red. So she takes it out, uses it, writes stuff down, and guess what? She puts it back into the drawer. So there's still 20 pens inside. So on the first try, she's taking the red. So let me write red over here. On the second try, she goes back into the drawer. Now notice that there are still 20 pens in the drawer, so that didn't change. because She put it back in the drawer. She used it and placed it back in the drawer, so the denominator didn't change. So we still have a 20 total. So now, on the second try, she wants to get a blue. Well, to be 10 out of 20 times 10 out of 20, well, let's just simplify that to a half and a half. So she has a one-fourth chance of accomplishing this, which is taking a red um, out of the drawer without looking, putting it back, and then taking a blue on the second try. And this is definitely an independent. Why is it independent? Because you noticed the first outcome here did not change the second one. If you notice, the change should happen in the denominator. There's still a total of 20. Now, if she had taken the pen and left it outside, we wouldn't have 20 anymore. Instead, we would have had 19 pens in the drawer. So this is definitely uh, an independent, okay? Because our, the total did not change. There are five slices of pepperoni, so I'm right. Five pepperoni, one sausage, three cheese slices left. Without looking, Mr. Douglas took a slice of pizza, ate it, and took another slice. What is the probability that he ate two slices of cheese pizza? Well. <clears throat> Let's add it up. We have nine slices then in total. Pepperoni, sausage, and cheese. Cheese, sausage, pepperoni. 
So, <clears throat> Mr. Douglas here wants to take, wants to eat two cheese slices, right? So he's going to go into the box or wherever this is, into the box. Without looking, he's going to remove a slice. So what's the probability that on his first try he took a cheese pizza, right? He wants to eat two cheese pizzas. Well, there were three cheese, so he had a three out of nine chance um, to accomplish that. And then he ate it. So obviously that slice of pizza he took in the beginning is not going back. So this three cheese pizza, uh, three, three slices of cheese pizza is no longer three, but instead now we have two. <clears throat> so if when he goes back to the box and he wants to take another cheese uh, pizza, there are no longer three, but there instead there are two. So he has a two out of and again, if he ate one, we don't have nine slices anymore. We have eight slices now. So that definitely changed. So it's two out of eight. Um, we can simplify this. Three over nine is just one third. Two over eight is just one fourth. And one twelfth. So he had a one twelfth chance of selecting a, a cheese slice of pizza first, eating it, and then picking another slice of cheese pizza. So you know very very small chance of that happening so this is definitely a dependent event because as you can tell this outcome definitely changed this one where did the change happen you notice that we no longer have nine but we have eight uh slices so the total definitely changed okay so the first the first outcome here definitely played an effect on the second one and i think that's it very simple and the answer keeps it's even here okay um that's it